Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Friday Gear Show. Today we're going to have a sneak peek at some of the shows that we've got coming up in the next couple of months. We're going to check out a few pieces of gear that we've ordered recently and at the end you get a chance to vote on the show that you want to see the most. So we're going to start with quick draws because quick draws are something that every rope climber needs. But the type of quick draw you should buy, well, that really depends on the genre of climbing that you do and your personal needs. We've ordered a bunch of sport climbing quick draws, but there are loads of different types on the market. Trad specific, alpine, extenders, fast and light, all round quick draws. There's a whole host that you can choose from. But we thought that sport climbing quick draws is where we'd start. And we've ordered a bunch in order to compare them. Now we've ordered a few types of sport climbing quick draws because there are loads on the market. But generally, sport climbing quick draws tend to be a little bit heavier, more chunky than their all round equivalent. That's to do with the overbuilt nature of them. The carabiners themselves, well, they're large and that's easier to grab. And also it makes them good to clip onto the bolt and the other end onto the rope itself. The dog bone, well, that's nice and thick, so you can grab it and haul on it when you're practicing a route. A lot of the carabiners that we've got in our selection have this bent gate at the bottom, and that makes it very easy to snap the rope into. As part of the selection that we have with us, we've got something like the DMM Alpha Sport Quick Draw or something all round like the Black Diamond Hot Forged Carabiner. Do you need something as chunky as, let's say, the Edelrid Bulletproof, which is an absolute beast of a carabiner, or will something a little simpler do, like the Fixie Orion? We're going to be examining all the different types and, of course, putting them against each other. I would kind of want to see what the DMM Alpha Sport is like against the Wild Country Proton, two absolute titans of the sport climbing world. That show will be coming soon. I'm sure myself or Teresa will be throwing ourselves at a hard cliff in order to put these things to the test. And talking about Teresa, well, she's talking about trousers. Hey guys, so Matt has done a ton of videos on men trousers in the past and I was just wondering what are the best options for women? Because I've been climbing for the past three years and honestly it's been a pain to find something that fits well, looks good, it's stretchy and not too baggy. So I've been climbing for the past three years and I have to admit finding a good pair of trousers is difficult. Sometimes they're just too baggy or not durable enough. So here are a couple of things to keep in mind when buying climbing trousers. You want a pair of pants that you know you can stretch out with and put a really high foot and you won't get stuck in them. Second thing, ideally they have to be high-waisted so that the waistband protects your skin against the harness. Third is durability. If the trousers are enforced in the right places, they will last you for longer. And this is also what distinguishes climbing trousers from some types of leggings. Talking about leggings, since it's a popular choice between women, I'll be testing out a range from Arteryx Oreo leggings, which are made with abrasion-resistant fabric, to Third Rock leggings, which are made with organic cotton fabrics. And for climbing trousers, I'll be testing out these, the Black Diamond Forged Denim Jeans. And they're pretty cool. They're super, super stretchy, um, but we'll see how durable they are. And uh, yeah, that's it for me. Back to Matt. You guys love belay devices, and we've got an interesting one for you to look at. This is the Edelrid Eddy. And on the surface of it, it does look a bit like a Gree Gree wannabe. It's semi-automatic, assisted braking, and can take ropes from 9mm up to 11mm. 
It has an interesting locking system. You simply press this button and slide it down to open the device. And then when it locks, back up again, then you clip the carabiner through it. So it alters a little bit from the Grigri design. It's got an enormous handle with a panic feature in it, a bit like the Grigri Plus. So this is a real head-to-head -head contender for that Grigri crown. It feels quite solid, quite chunky, a little bit heavy, but really it's all down to the handling of this device. And that's what we're going to be putting to the test in a comparison with some other devices. Okay, everything that we've chatted about today is currently in the Epic TV shop, so you can go and check that out. Links down below. These shows will be coming up very, very soon. But before you leave, I want you to vote down below at what's your favourite. Which one do you want to see the most? And the one with the most votes, well, that one will probably go first. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.